It was in the mid-19th century in the Neander Valley of northern Germany, known locally as the Neanderthal, that limestone miners unearthed a skull. The bones were initially dismissed as the remains of some poor idiot. Others thought the skulls represented the missing link between apes and humans. From the very beginning, those Neanderthal bones were a problem. They didn't fit with anyone's idea of our ancestors. It was in Paris in 1913 that the French paleontologist Massa Lamboul concluded his extensive study of bones of a Neanderthal from La Chapelle Lasson. Boul painted for his colleagues a graphic picture of this ancient man. The Neanderthal was a slouching, bent-kneed, bent-hipped, semi-idiot. But Boul made a fundamental error. He misinterpreted the evidence. The Neanderthal Boul studied had suffered from severe arthritis, which had buckled him over. By concluding that this was his natural posture, Boulle created a character of Neanderthals as inferior brutes. Neanderthals were either too primitive or too far removed from Homo sapiens to be considered successful. These were the ideas of the time. They were evolutionary failures without the graces of language or intelligence. That, however, was far from the truth. I am an athlete. I don't know what makes me play harder. They say it's science. I call it heart. Feel the footsteps. Feel the hit. Unleash your champion when TLC presents a heart-pounding television event. Tuesday and Wednesday on TLC. At BASF, we don't make the floor. We make it tougher. We don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Nature made it. Minwax makes it beautiful with rich wood stains and long-lasting protective finishes. Turning a house into a beautiful home is as easy as turning to Minwax. Introducing the first car ever designed by nine-year-old girls. Luxury, power, petting suit. Now, who's in the driver's seat? Ever feel like kids are running your life? At Fox Family, the grown-ups are still in charge, at least during prime time. Hey, grown-ups are family, too. perform exploratory surgery. When there's been a car accident, every second counts. Clear! I'm Mitch Antonarelli, auto claims expert for Liberty Mutual Insurance. Our claims process begins before the accident at our collision training school. It teaches our experts to diagnose what's wrong, to help get you back on the road fast. Clamp! At Liberty Mutual, we help you live a safer, more secure life. It's insurance in action. If I can save just one car. The greatest names in professional sports. Mark McGuire. Technology meets human performance. Monsters of the gridiron expand their body crushing potential through cyborg science. The big hitters use the physics of force to rip hits in record breaking numbers. Unleash the champion inside you. The amazing science of sports. Tuesday and Wednesday on TLC. Character, the difference between giving up and getting up. This September in Sydney, Australia, Time Warner Communications joins NBC, CNBC, and MSNBC to bring you the complete Olympics. Three NBC networks, more than 400 hours of combined coverage, 
With over 270 hours on CNBC and MSNBC, more moments you'll never forget. Time Warner Communications is proud to bring you the complete Olympics. From the Tony Award-winning composers of Grand Hotel, Titanic in Nine, comes a thrilling new musical. It's Phantom. Arthur Coppett and Mari Yeston unveil a new version of this romantic tale. November 6th, one performance only at King Center for the Performing Arts. Don't miss Phantom. It's like you've never seen him before. Tickets go on sale Sunday at the King Center. Ticket masters were charged by phone. For 150,000 years, as long as our species has been on the Earth, Neanderthal people roamed the frozen plains of Europe, from Spain and France in the west to the shores of the Black Sea in the east. Like our own ancestors, Neanderthals made use of sheltering overhangs in caves. They used similar stone tools. They gathered food and used fire as Homo sapiens did at the time. But the faces of Neanderthals look dramatically different from us. The structure of the Neanderthal's face displays great overarching brow ridges. The proportions of the middle part of the face are massive. Placing his skull beside a Homo sapiens reveals the difference in size and shape. The Neanderthal's eye sockets are much higher and there's virtually no forehead. Her jaw slopes back, downwards from the teeth. They lack the jutting chin of Homo sapiens. Neanderthal's powerful jaws probably acted as a vice to hold skins or timber they were working on. Also, severe wear marks on their exceptionally large front teeth. Grooves in the enamel contain microscopic traces of animal and vegetable matter. A substantial nose covered their large sinus cavities. These were features specially adapted to a cold climate. They allowed Neanderthals to warm freezing cold air before inhaling it into their lungs. These were strong people. The thickness of their bones indicates that they supported heavyweight muscles and sinews, capable of hefting the largest modern humans and tossing them aside like fallen branches. Despite their strength, though, they were not a tall people. The average height for males was about five and a half feet and slightly smaller for females. The size and shape of a species' bones tells us more than just how big they are. They also reveal their shape. And a people's shape reveals their adaptation to a particular climate. Tall, thin-boned people, like the African Maasai, have a greater surface area of skin, so they can lower their body temperature through evaporation. Whereas the Eskimo, have developed short bone stocky builds to reduce evaporation and conserve heat. Adaptation is the key to survival. Neanderthal bones show their bodies were short and stocky, perfectly adapted to living in a cold climate. Despite their previous characterizations, these people were not crude cavemen and women. The Neanderthal brain was in fact as big and sometimes larger than that of Homo sapiens. 
Like us, the Neanderthals successfully adapted to life on Earth. And for a while, we were fellow travelers. As Neanderthals moved south out of Europe, Homo sapiens left Africa and journeyed north. That brought them into the Middle East, a world the Neanderthals had already made their own. From the school and taboon skulls found in Israel, scientists know that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals both lived in the Middle East around 100,000 years ago. What were the marked differences between these two groups? What distinguishes us from the Neanderthals? Beneath these rocky outcrops on the outskirts of Nazareth in northern Israel lies one of the oldest burial chambers in the world. Inside the cave of Jebo Kafshi, archaeologists found a cemetery of early human remains. Our human ancestors buried 21 people, including a young woman who lived close to 100,000 years ago. She was lying on her side, her hands over her abdomen, her legs half folded. At her feet, they had buried a child, about six years old. The only double burial of humans known from these ancient times. The skeletons at Kafshi have been described as essentially indistinguishable from our own. These were remarkably modern looking people with high brain cases, fairly vertical foreheads, and only slight brow ridges. The volume of their skulls indicates a brain size similar to humans today, and they have that highly distinctive feature of modern humans, a pronounced chin. They, they look very much like us, not exactly, but getting closer. The fact that these people were also burying the dead and making uh, good stone tools, using red ochre for different purposes, collecting marine shells, perhaps for body decorations and so on, clearly indicates that the elements of some modern behavior were already carried by these people. Another burial at Kafshi hints at a sense of ritual. In a small act of ceremony, a pair of fallow deer antlers have been placed over the chest of this 13-year-old boy. This was the very first evidence of a burial with gifts. These people were entering a world of abstract thought and symbols, signs of a developing consciousness. They behave in ways that we've assumed are unique to our species. But Homo sapiens were not the only ones to bury their dead. Yes, you did. Um. Ever get the feeling some people just stop trying? At Avis, we know a couple minutes can make all the difference. That's why with our preferred service, you can skip the counter and go straight to your car. I watch the ripples change the sides, but never leave the stream. In today's net economy, Companies are struggling to change, struggling with the complexities of e-business, with making intranets, extranets, and the internet work together across any platform around the world. Well, now it can all work together as one net. With Net Services software from Novell, the power to change.
past 65 years, Chevy Suburban has come a very long way, introducing the best Suburban yet. The all-new Chevy Suburban. Like a rock. One year ago today, Jim Horner had an important choice to make. Should he read the Wall Street Journal online or look for new business ideas from some other website? Fortunately, Jim decided to go to WSJ.com, where he found constantly updated news, helping him start a highly successful web-based tech company, which helped Jim live out another one of his dreams. Imagine what the journal could do for you. Now, get a 30-day free trial of the Wall Street Journal online. Log on to WSJ.com now. On TLC, we live the unbelievable. Oh, my God. A lucky man shocks Oakland's ER. And on an all-new Code Blue, residents in training struggle for control. It's all here, Sunday at 8. I'm an athlete. I don't know what makes me run faster, hit harder. They watch tapes, review my technique. They say it's science. I call it something else. Heart. TLC puts you in the bodies of the world's greatest athletes so you can feel the sweet spot, hear the footsteps, unleash your champion in a heart-pounding television event. The amazing science of sports. Tuesday and Wednesday on TLC. Discovery Channel Store. So much to touch. Call toll-free 1-877-DCI-STORE for the store nearest you. In 1983, Kibara Cave on the southern slopes of Mount Carmel yielded a treasure it had concealed for 60,000 years. It's of a man age between 25 and 35, the most exciting and complete skeleton of a Neanderthal ever found. As his body was unearthed, it became clear that he had been purposely laid out in a shallow pit. Here was graphic evidence of a Neanderthal burial. The archaeologist always asks himself or herself when, when they find the burial first of all they would like to make sure that the burial was intentional so although on the cast you cannot see the outline of the grave it means that they actually excavated a very narrow pit in which the entire skeleton was placed in and therefore many of these ribs which are generally not very well preserved in a normal excavation are very well preserved in the case of this Kibara burial. The second thing that shows you that this is an intentional burial is the fact that uh, the skull is missing. And the skull is missing not because someone kicked it away, but because someone came and picked it up. And when they picked the skull, let me show you that right here, the third upper right molar fell from its socket in the maxilla from the, from the skull itself. So basically someone came at a, at a point in time later after the, the, the flesh decayed and removed the skull. So uh, when you look at this burial, you come to think about the humans who dug the hole after this young man died, buried the corpse, covered it, and then maybe came back and removed the skull for an unknown purpose. Something that tells you about perhaps or hints to some kind of a religious beliefs that are not easy to decipher from the archaeological remains. Their stone tools provide further insights into the Neanderthal mind. If you look at hunters gatherers today, people use, the hunters use the, the arrows and the, the arrowheads, the projectile points, also as cutting tools. So basically I would say that many of these points probably used for hunting and butchering and sometimes even piercing, making holes in hides and so on. So they were much more like a Swiss army knife than just projectile points. However, making points like this takes a lot of uh, knowledge about how to break the rock 
to get this point, the, the concept of how the points should look like. Now, this clearly uh, uh, indicates a planning death. You plan what you are going to do. If the Neanderthals were capable of such abstract thought, it's very likely that they also had language. Preserved with the Kibara skeleton is a tiny bone called the hyoid that sits at the base of the tongue. Its primary function is to enable speech. After the dirt was completely removed, we found this hyoid bone, which looks, looks like very much like a modern hyoid bone. This bone indicates that probably these Neanderthals 60,000 years ago were able to speak to each other, communicate with each other. When you get all these pieces of information, all these components, you have to come up with a conclusion and say, yes, these people were communicating with each other. Perhaps they didn't have an elaborate language, the one we have, but no, no doubt that they were communicating with each other and getting things done with some, with some planning ahead. In some respects, Neanderthal behavior was very similar to our own. There are even signs that they displayed care and concern for their fellow beings. This Neanderthal was lucky to be alive. He had suffered severe trauma to his right arm. Unless someone was there to care for him each day, provide him with food and support, chances are he wouldn't have survived. In addition to showing complex emotions, there's evidence that Neanderthals also lived in a world of symbols. The imposing pillar of rock in the Wadi Amud near the Sea of Galilee points the way to another landmark discovery. It was made by Professor Yoel Rock and his team in 1992. Excavations here have unearthed a Neanderthal child with clear signs of a purposeful burial. Her significance lies in what was found buried with her. So this is, uh, this is the way the Amud baby, Amud 7, was found. Uh, it's a Neanderthal baby just uh, buried intentionally against the wall. The first elements to be exposed are actually these two uh, bones that belong to the cranial vault. And we couldn't tell what it is. I, we knew it's a hominid, but what kind of hominid, we didn't know. We have to wait until the mandible ex is exposed and to realize, the, uh, to realize that it has no chin. Uh, to determine that we are talking about Neanderthal because at, even at, the, at this young age Homo sapiens, the contemporary hominid, has already a chin. And there is really no doubt in my mind that some objects like a, a jaw of a reindeer and some uh, bits and pieces of uh, ostrich shell were put as part of an offering or whatever uh, just before the, the grave was closed. The way her bones are laid out, with her arms pressed to her side and the placing of a jawbone over her body, suggests that these Neanderthals felt loss and grief, a sense of bereavement, which they expressed in a symbolic way. This child was not alone. Fourteen other Neanderthals were buried in this cave. They must have been an imposing sight in the flesh. So this is uh, Amud 1. This was uh, found, this specimen was found in the 60s. It is a classical Neanderthal. It is uh, a very long, has a very long uh, uh, brain case, a very flat one, has uh, steel brow ridges and has no chin. It is a classical Neanderthal also in the sense that it, the brain capacity is very large.
This is, as a matter of fact, this is probably the largest brain capacity ever recorded in the hominid record. It's over 1,700 uh, cc's. The mandible is very characteristic of any Neanderthal in all respect, has a retromolar space, and the face, especially the, the protruding part of the face, is also very typical of Neanderthal. Here the evidence reveals that Neanderthals lived in the Middle East for at least 50,000 years, the same time as Homo sapiens. It's tempting to imagine that the two species shared more than tools, burial practices, and symbolism. Surely, the people who lived such a parallel existence with Homo sapiens and behaved so similarly must have been closely related. Perhaps one of us. Well, they weren't like us. I mean, they, the magnitude of differences is really immense. And you see it on the skulls, and I, I would say all the more so on the, on the, on the soft tissues. They were different. They, they were quite different from each other. Verification of this fundamental difference came from the Neanderthal skeleton found in the Neander Valley in Germany. A minute segment of genetic material was extracted from these bones, which has provided dramatic findings. The message from the ancient genes is that Neanderthals and humans are not closely related at all. There are far too many genetic variations between these two peoples. Four times what you'd expect to see between any two humans. These are two undeniably different species. Now we prepare our ingredients. If candy corns are out of season, you can use circus peanuts. Now take your julienne de ballone and dust them with your grated malted balls. The licorice is al dente. A tremendous enjoyment for the juvenile palate. Drizzle the ketchup and icing slowly. And when it's done, voila! Ever feel like kids are running your life? At Fox Family, the grown-ups are still in charge. At least during prime time. Hey, grown-ups are family too. You've always trusted us with your letters, your bills, your packages. Now, we're bringing the security and confidence of the real world into the virtual one. Introducing the U.S. Postal Service's e-bill pay. Enroll now to receive, pay, and send your bills online with the service you already know and trust. Is there an insurance company with a 146-year history of proving that your trust is not misplaced? Without question, the St. Paul. Thank you for holding customer support. I just want to let you know I'll never buy anything from your company again. I'm sorry, what can I do to help? Help? I've called you guys five times, and every time I have to explain this problem over right, again. No, the but last time you asked me yeah, to no, fax when... my invoice, when I called back the rep, knew nothing about my fax. No, no, but when... I emailed you. You yeah, thanked when you... me for writing? Could you tell me exactly what the problem is? The problem? The problem? Hello? Are you human? Coming up, the human journey continues. Witness the first signs of cultural evolution in the creative explosion next. Then see Thrill Rides Designing Fear tonight on TLC. And keep up with us online from discovery.com and click on TLC. The 2001 Corolla Sport. The best-selling car in the world. Dependable. Reliable. 189 a month. Lease Corolla Sport for 48 months with 1688 due at signing. 189 a month. Now's the time to get your Corolla Sport. See your nearest Toyota dealer right away. An offer this good won't last long. 
The National 2000 Clearance Event is going on now at Auto USA, Toyota and Lexus of Melbourne's pre-owned vehicle superstore. Hi, I'm Laura Nicole. This month at Auto USA, we have top quality pre-owned vehicles at or below wholesale prices. We have Toyota and Lexus certified pre-owned vehicles. And don't forget, all of our trade-ins go through our gold check certification and come with a warranty. Auto USA gives you a new car feel at or below wholesale prices. Don't miss out on our National 2000 Clearance Event at Auto USA. Making good deals, making good friends. We almost certainly shared a common ancestor in Homo ergaster two million years ago. But from that time on, our revolutionary journeys took us a world apart. Neanderthals arose in Europe through the line of Heidelbergensis, while we evolved in Africa, emerging a mere 130,000 years later. Some 40,000 years ago, modern humans left the Middle East and moved north into Europe. Yet disaster lay ahead for the Neanderthals. Within 15,000 years, they were dead and gone. Their species had become extinct. Clues as to the demise of the Neanderthals can be pieced together from their occupation sites here in southwestern France. The limestone cliffs and rock overhangs of the Dordogne Valley offered ideal shelter for hunter-gatherers. Both Neanderthals and modern humans made their homes here. But there was a major difference in the way they used natural resources. During the Ice Age, the Dordogne was a migratory pathway for herds of reindeer. And in the early spring of each year, salmon moved up the river to spawn. From their earliest settlements of the valley, modern humans organized their lives around the seasonal movements of the animals and the fish. These people roamed around their territory, finding temporary shelter wherever they went. In this way, they stayed close to the source of passing food. It was a mobile existence, without the stability and comfort of a permanent home base. But the benefits were of paramount importance. These ancestors maintained a constant food supply for their families, increasing the chances of survival for the young and the old. Protecting these two vulnerable groups was crucial for the survival of the whole group. The elders were the keepers of tribal knowledge, which they passed on to the next generation. Youth guaranteed a future for the species. Nomadic life expanded their view of the world, and this, in turn, opened their minds. They came to know and understand each new landscape, its plant and animal species. They learned to plan and to anticipate possibilities as well as problems. Constant change encouraged flexibility and innovation. Evidence for all these adaptations can be seen in their occupation sites, like La Merlin by the Vizea River in the Dordogne in France. The points found here 
when first made, were as sharp as modern steel blades. Seeking the best stone, they gathered material from great distances, even trading with hunters from as far away as 250 miles. They manufactured their tools with greater finesse and technical mastery of the raw materials. The blades and points were made for more specialized applications. Using resin, sinew, and fiber, they affixed the new points to wooden spears, adding an efficient new weapon to their hunting arsenal. As they moved around the landscape, they would have encountered other groups, forging new alliances and exchanging ideas, trading goods. In this way, human society as we know it may have had its beginnings. Most likely, it was this strategic lifestyle that gave our ancestors the critical edge. It certainly aided their survival. In contrast, the Neanderthals lived an existence driven by routine and predictability. The evidence from their occupation sites, like Le Mustier, shows us that they preferred to establish permanent central campsites. The design of their tools barely changed over 150,000 years. The raw materials were gathered close by, rarely more than 30 miles away. Neanderthals radiated out from their home sites foraging for food in small groups, never straying far. Their diet was limited to what they found within a short distance. Even then, they don't appear to have caught reindeer or salmon. Animal bones found at their home sites tell us that instead, they were hunting one of the mighty beasts of the time, the wild cattle or alrocs. Not surprisingly, Neanderthal bones show signs of rugged wear and tear. Three quarters of them have evidence of healed bone fractures, mostly to the upper body. Accidents took their toll. Encrusted in limestone, this Neanderthal fell to his death. This grim, self-sufficient lifestyle isolated them from other Neanderthal groups and families. But there was one group of people they did come into contact with, the roving bands of Homo sapiens. Although we might expect to see evidence of a violent confrontation between Neanderthal and Homo sapiens, the two species appear to have lived harmoniously, side by side. From these exchanges, Neanderthals learned to modify their tool design. Territorial conflicts were unlikely at this time, when so few people shared the landscape. There were probably only 10,000 to 12,000 modern humans and Neanderthals living in Europe. Fewer than 500 family groups scattered across the entire continent. The question is, did contact between the two species lead to interbreeding? It's hard to imagine them living side by side for thousands of years without having sex. An intriguing burial in Portugal raises the prospects of at least one instance of interbreeding. Stained with red ochre, the body of a four-year-old child shows a mixture of Neanderthal and modern human characteristics. 
The limb bones are short and thick set, while the skull fragments are like those of Homo sapiens. But this curious offspring died without descendants. There's no evidence of Neanderthal's genes mixed with ours today. Whatever the relations were between these people, in the end, our species displaced the Neanderthals. To proliferate, all Homo sapiens needed was a slightly better adaptation to the European environment than their counterparts. Geneticists have estimated that a mere 2% advantage in survival rates would have allowed them to overtake Neanderthals in just 30 generations, a thousand years. I'm not quite sure how to tell you this. What is it? You've only got 40 years left to live. Maybe 45, 50 times. I see her at the same time almost every day. She's always there waiting for me, you know? You can set your watch by her. Look, she's a real sweetheart, you know? I mean, I bring her lunch up to her apartment and I sing Italian love songs to her. In cities across the country, Philip Morris provides grants to Meals on Wheels programs to eliminate waiting lists so that thousands of additional seniors can have a hot meal and a visitor. I'm the only person she sees most days, and if I could just get a smile on her face, well, it's the high point of my day. Philip Morris and Meals on Wheels are fighting more than just hunger among the elderly. We're fighting loneliness. Stive love, love Working to make a difference, the people of Philip Morris. I've got to tell you, a few weeks ago, I saw the White's metal detector ad on TV. In no time at all, my local dealer had me out treasure hunting. I was finding the good stuff my first day. And the best part? You can see what's in the ground before you dig it up. Your treasure hunting adventure can start right now. Call for your free catalog. My wife said I needed a healthy hobby. She's proud of the weight I've lost and really proud of this. Call now. Coming up, the human journey continues. Witness the first signs of cultural evolution and the creative explosion next. Then see Thrill Rides Designing Fear tonight on TLC. And to keep up with us online, go to discovery.com and click on TLC. On TLC, we live the unbelievable. Oh my God. A lucky man shocks Oakland's ER. And on an all-new Code Blue, residents in training struggle for control. It's all here, Sunday at 8. The greatest names of professional sports give you an inside look at a world where technology meets human performance. Where monsters of the gridiron expand their body-crushing potential. And big hitters rip hits at record-breaking numbers. Tuesday and Wednesday on TLC. Lost ruins on Earth reveal tales of heresy and murder. What really happened when the forgotten pharaoh reigned? Plus, new evidence unlocks the mysteries of people in ancient Africa. Catch TLC's original look into the past. Next Friday at 9 on TLC. Going somewhere? Let Discovery.com transport you away from the ordinary. Discovery.com's travel site offers vivid feature stories about unique destinations, stunning 360-degree photography, plus videos, travel guides, and all the tools you need to research and book your trip. Don't just watch it, live it. Discovery Travel, your chance to create a discovery experience of your own. It was here, on the Iberian Peninsula, that the Neanderthals made their last stand. Gradually, they were pushed into occupying these rugged, marginal areas in the most westerly parts of Europe. In isolated caves and overhangs, their remains are discovered. Here and there, they lingered on. This skull, from saint Suzerre in France is dated to 36,000 years ago. 
And this jawbone from 27,000 years ago found in Safaria in Spain is the last Neanderthal known to exist. These late dates bring the lives of the last Neanderthal people hauntingly close to us. The Neanderthals were an extraordinary people. Far from being evolutionary failures, they survived for more than 150,000 years through the depths of the Ice Age. For much of that time, they shared the world with us. They may have been a different species, but they were part of the great family of hominids, our family. With their departure, we became the only species of human being left on Earth. Across continents of space and time, Homo sapiens continued to roam the world. Beyond the Middle East, beyond Europe, and into another kind of world. Our ancestors' journey was about to embark on its most explosive and dramatic venture into the unknown. The unexplored territory of the mind. Coming up, the human journey continues. Witness the first signs of cultural evolution in the creative explosion next. Then see thrill rides designing fear tonight on TLC. And to keep up with us online, go to discovery.com and click on TLC. On TLC, relive the unbelievable. Oh my God. A lucky man shocks Oakland's ER. And on an all new code blue, residents in training struggle for control. It's all here, Sunday at 8. years ago, some of our ancestors, Homo sapiens, left the Middle East and continued their journey out of Africa, heading east toward a completely new world. Moving no more than a few miles each generation, these early hunter-gatherers reached Southeast Asia within 15,000 years. They roamed where they pleased in search of new food sources. Here, they found a tropical paradise of warm waters and lush vegetation. their lives were about to be changed forever. These ancestors had been on the world stage for barely 60,000 years when they were nearly exterminated. A single cataclysmic event nearly brought their journey to an abrupt and tragic end. 75,000 years ago, Toba, a volcano on the island of Sumatra exploded violently. This was a caldera, the most deadly volcano of all. The eruption was 4,000 times more powerful than Mount St. Helens. The blast hurled 2,000 cubic miles of molten rock and ash into the atmosphere. This was a catastrophe of global proportions. 
For 10 years, dense clouds of sulfurous ash filled the skies, shrouded the globe, and plunged the earth into a gloomy volcanic winter. Modern humans were pushed to the very edge of extinction. The eruption decimated the global population. Dramatic climate change caused our entire species to plummet from 100,000 to as few as 1,000 adults. Isolated groups survived in a cold, gray world as volcanic plumes blotted out heat and light. Now, they had to learn new ways to adapt and survive. Over the next few thousand years, this fragile remnant of humanity slowly grew its numbers. In the Far East, they wandered south, driven by the search for game, or fear of the many active volcanoes scattered along the Asian Ring of Fire. What capacity allowed our species to rebound from crisis, to expand its population, and live longer lives? The answer lies in mankind's ability to view and interpret the surrounding world. Yet human consciousness gives intelligent beings an inner world to occupy. Man can think, can do, can feel, and can relate to the behavior of others. Our self-awareness is more highly developed than in any other species. is the secret of our success. We can see our place in the social group and can anticipate the need for food or fuel. We shuffle and order these thoughts while reflecting on the past or projecting forward into the future. All this leads to strategy the ability to manipulate events, relationships, and the environment to our advantage. Consciousness was the key that opened the door to new horizons. During 15,000 years of nomadic wandering, Homo sapiens steadily populated the Eastern world, a journey accomplished in 700 generations. Traveling was made easier by the land bridges that existed 70,000 years ago. Sea levels were 250 feet below what they are today, and much of Southeast Asia formed a single landmass. When humans reached the modern-day Indonesian island of Java, they found a perfect land to make their home. A mixture of forest and open woodland and rich volcanic soils nourished by large rivers. There is plenty of game with herds of wild cattle.